Welcome back to the Angels here on OTP 25. It is July 20th. We are getting closer to the trade deadline here. As you can see, the Angels five games back in that Pacific Division. Big, big mush of teams right here. Us five games back, the D-backs and Giants are both six games back. And then even the A's and the Dodgers at nine games back are not out of it. Any of these teams could go on a run. The Rockies could fall apart. Who knows what could happen? But we, we need to make a move here. We need to make some moves here at the deadline. We need to take some swings. We need to go for it because we're running out of time to win a World Series here in Anaheim. And we've we've had some a weird team this year. We're, we're, we're still playing very well. But overall, the team is looking not like it, it, it usually is, I feel like. We're not like... If you take a look at our team stats here, we're not like tearing the world on fire with our hitting here seventh and runs scored not exactly great our home runs have been miserable this season we're not hitting very well the pitching has been solid we are tied for third and runs allowed the starters have been solid the bullpen's been really good uh the defense has been much improved so defense and pitching we can still hang our hat on that but the, the offense needs some big improvement honestly i'm kind of surprised that the bullpen era is this great and the pitching is looking this great because when you look at our staff i feel like a lot of guys are having down years maybe it's i don't know maybe i'm just looking at i'm seeing way too many lefties or something but i don't know we've had guys who have been hurt and whatnot like i'm just not used to having no stopper essentially jorge sosa's hurt right now so we just have a bunch of like single inning guys like a classic sort of bullpen and it's been working. So we might try to pick up... Uh, well, let's get into it here. Really, I went out and looked for a left-handed bat. Because we look at... First of all, we should take a look at our injured list here. Chris Aquino has been out for quite a bit. This is like an eight-week injury when it first happened. It is a torn abdominal muscle. He still has three weeks, two to three weeks left on this injury here. He was absolutely incredible for us before he got hurt. Hopefully he can continue that when he comes back. But right now, we have to play without him. And because we're doing that, our offense is looking very, very lackluster. Uh, we've got Ken O'Brien up, who's got a very small sample size, and he's been on fire in that small sample size. Uh, Suzuki's been solid in the, the two-hole. Padilla's been pretty good. Haggy's been about a little bit above league average. Huzzy's kind of cooled off. And then everyone else is just kind of treading water and getting us to the end of the season. So I feel like we could use a good left-handed bat. Because you look at this lineup, it's very right-handed heavy. So I'm out there looking at the trade block. And I just didn't really see too many bats that I like. There's Really, it's this guy. It's Urbina, who's a left-handed power bat who I would not be opposed to going out and getting. He's having like by far the best season of his career. You can see here, 127 WRC plus. He's got 24 home runs. He's striking at, at a high clip, but he's hitting home runs, and that's something we could really use in our lineup right now. So I was like, let's maybe go out and get this guy. But then I started offering some reliever trades and whatnot. One for Harmon Stead, I think it was. Yes, for Harmon Stead here who was a former reliever of ours, now at the Rays. He's got some decent ratings. I was like, maybe we could pick him up and add him to our staff for the rest of the year, help out the staff, help out the, the, the bullpen. And we offered just like a random minor league catcher who's decent, you know, could be useful for a team, but not going to play for us. But we offered him, and then they were like, hey, we'll take any of these guys. And a lot of these guys are like prospects that I don't really want to give up or like current bullpen guys we don't want to give up. But then I saw Chris Berry here, who was a 20th round pick, who's having a great season in A-ball this year, just randomly. And I'm like, I would be fine with giving up this guy. But I'm like, if they're offering him, if they're asking for him, what would I be able to get if I just shopped him? Because teams clearly are interested in this guy. So I shopped him, and we got back Nolan Shawnawell, who's on the Phillies. And if you look at the Phillies here, they are god-awful. They're at the bottom of the Metro Division. They are out of it. They're a rebuilding team. If you look at, or I'll show you in a second, they're a rebuilding team when you go to their, or maybe you'll just see here, honestly. Yes, rebuilding team. You can see that right there. They're, they're looking to sell pieces here. So the Philadelphia Phillies, you may, may remember, they have Nolan Shawnwell, who they picked up from the Dodgers, but they also have Yuri Perez, who is, you know, he's 35, he's fragile. 
he, but he's still a very productive pitcher here. You can see ever since he's gone to Philly, he had a really good year in 2035. He had, I guess he was hurt in 2036. And he's he's never really pitched like a full season, but he's still a very good pitcher in these years. And we would have him for this year, next year 32.5, and then a vesting option for 2040, but it requires 180, pitch, 180 innings, which he has not done since 2035. So I, I'd, I'd be willing to take that gamble. So I just offered them, hey, we, they would give us Sean Well for, for Barry. So I offered them uh, Sean Well. I, so for, for Sean Well and Perez, I offered them Sean Vickers, who is a 50 potential former second round pick of ours in 2032. This guy could be a legit piece. So then I offered that, and they come back, and they're like, we'll give you any of these guys, and we'll just give you Perez and Shawnawell. So I'm like, how about McKay? McKay is a 50 potential, currently hurt, but it's a couple-day injury. Decent power, not going to strike out. First baseman, former sixth-round pick. Absolutely this guy is a valuable player to have. These other guys, I just, you know, I guess we could give them... I mean, he's a reliever. I think McKay is more valuable. We could probably give him one of these shortstops, perhaps, like Nolte or Benzera. Like Benzera, I just think is a very like depth filler at this point because he can't ever hit. So he's just he like obviously he can play an insane shortstop, but he's even worse than Guadarrama at hitting. Uh, Ron Tipton is a reliever. He's currently in our bullpen, a lefty. He uh, he kind of just like randomly had a really good season last year and has kind of really improved for us. Former 18th round pick. Uh, who else? Heedeman who we know about Hedeman, he's a reliever at this point. He's not really a starter potential anymore. Uh, Pelmar, I don't want to give them my closer, obviously. Batista is a reliever prospect who's very young. Chris Berry is the guy that they were interested in in the first place. I don't know why teams are interested in, but they are. Uh, and then Chris McKay and then Guadarrama. And like if we trade Guadarrama, we would have to make a move. Honestly, I would not be opposed to giving them Guadarrama. Like, he's 26, he's a valuable player. I might even give them, like, Guadarrama, because I feel like just Vickers and Guadarrama might be a little bit under. Like, I don't know, it feels like it'd be ripping them off a bit if I was to give them, if I was to get Sean Owell and Perez. Although Sean Owell at this point is a 36-year-old, can only hit against lefties, or only hit against righties, cannot hit against lefties at all. You can't play him against lefties. Uh, and really he's, he's mostly, he's like Juan Soto. He's going to get on base a ton, but he's not got that like elite pop anymore. But the main piece in this obviously is Perez to beef up that rotation even more. And then we have him for the next two playoff runs, hopefully. Uh, and then Sean Owell would help us for the rest of the season. So may maybe it's, maybe it isn't too big of a deal because Sean Owell's kind of just like a throw in at this point. So, and they're obviously very old. So I'm thinking... Yeah, I think I might just do McKay. Yeah. But honestly, because we had this Brendan Nolte guy, who, I mean, I don't know. I'm just kind of, I guess he's only a 60 at shortstop. Because I was going to say, if we trade Guadarrama, I would not be opposed to just putting Brendan Nolte at shortstop. But he's not quite what, I guess he could be. 65 potential. 65 potential. Looks like his bat could be a little bit better. I don't know why Guadarrama is a 50. It's because he has more power. I don't know. Like, I wouldn't even oppose to doing that. Maybe we'll look to do something like that with a different trade. But I think we're going to go ahead and do this for Vickers and McKay. Picking up Yuri Perez and Nolan Shawnawell. I think we're going to go ahead and do that. Reacquiring two players. See if we can uh, help on the, uh, the playoff run here. So, yeah. Vickers and McKay are going to go to the Phillies. And we are going to get Sean Owell and Perez. And then if we take a quick look at the rotation here, Yuri Perez, you know, Justin Lampkin has been our worst starter. But it just doesn't make sense to not have Lampkin in the rotation because he's Justin Lampkin. You know, maybe by playoff time we move him into the bullpen if, if we rock a one through four of like Perez, Pimentel, Flynn, and Hoskins because those have been our best guys. Uh, but... Right now, I don't think we're going to do something where we're going to have Luke Pettit in the rotation over Lampkin. Because Pettit's, like, he's been great. 
There's no doubt about it. He has been fantastic in these 15 innings that we've given him. He's held the zone. He's held that fifth spot, or that starter spot. But I think we're just going to throw him in the bullpen here. Uh, I mean, I guess we could send him down, but I think he's just going to go to the bullpen. We'll probably send down Heedeman because he's been awful. Uh, so yeah, I think that's what we'll do. We'll send down Heedeman. We'll move Luke Pettit into that long relief role. And then Yuri Perez comes to our team. He's in the... Okay, so I guess maybe we'll like flip these two guys and then we'll put Hoskins there. Yeah, that works for me. And then honestly, I'm... I'm thinking, like, our best move here. Like, Roussel Shepard does have a one war as purely for a defensive replacement sort of guy. He's got... He's been playing second, and then I guess he spots some games at short and center defensively as a backup. He, I don't just thought... We, we just... We could get something better as a backup. Like, I think Sean Well would take his spot on the roster, so I think we're going to try to get out of this Roussel Shepard contract and maybe pick up like a reliever or something useful for Roussel Shepard or just something that can help us, something a bit, bit more valuable. So if we shop Shepard here, there are some names who pop up. Uh, so like a first baseman, no. I mean, he's okay. Well, first of all, we should look at what it would be in the lineups if we got rid of him. So Shepard, we don't need a backup infielder or outfielder because Ken O'Brien has that covered at every goddamn position, essentially. Uh, so yeah, so let's just say that Rousseau Shepard's out of here, and then it would probably be Tukes drops, because I don't think he's he's been good enough to be like our everyday DH. I think I still want him on the team, but Tukes would drop out of the starting lineup here. So let's just say De La Cruz drops out of there, Tukes drops back to here, and then Sean Well would be in this DH spot. So then, uh, yeah, we'd have Ken O'Brien take these Shepard spots in the lineup here. So Sean Wall would be there. And, yeah, we could pick up something useful for Shepard, I feel like. So maybe like a backup, like a lefty bench bat? Because right now our lefty bench bat is De La Cruz. But the thing is, if we pick up a bat, then we have to find who we want to send down for him. And that would it would probably be, I don't even know. Maybe, a, maybe an upgraded shortstop? Perhaps, but you're not going to get an upgrade for Shepard is the thing. We'll let this. It's probably going to be like a reliever, I would I would think. So if we go and shop Shepard. Like, there are some decent players. This guy's wrecked. I don't think we want to pick up him. All right, so as far as I'm concerned, I'm thinking another lefty bat is going to be the best course of action here. We'll have to just decide who we're going to send down to keep this guy in the roster. But... I'm thinking either this guy from the Tigers, Glenn Ridzuski, lefty, lefty. He has some serious gap power, power and eye combo with a good BABIP as well, potential. He's 28, he's almost 29. He could play a decent corner after he plays some first base. High leader, adaptability, gives you some decent speed. Uh, has never really played too, too much in the major leagues. Been a bench player for except for like one year with Boston here, where he did hit 34 home runs. Uh, and he's like a serviceable lefty bat, for sure. I think he could be a good pickup for us. Uh, and then we also have... Who was the other guy? It was Urbina. Urbina from the Mets, who was the guy we talked about who was on the block. He's got that 70 gap, the 65 power. He is signed through this year and next year on a very cheap 1.52. Uh, so that's, that's could, that could be helpful. First baseman... I guess he could play second base too, but mainly a first baseman. And he's having by far the best year of his career right now. 25, 24 home runs. He had 15 last year. He's never really been too, too great. He's a veteran, but he's a decent lefty bat who who's running hot right now, it looks like. Uh, or there is Santiago Ramos, who is a former star with the Detroit Tigers. I guess quality starter, I should say, not star. The quality starter with the Tigers, now at the Pirates, now that he's 30. And he's, he's coming off a really bad season where I guess he was hurt. Uh, but he's good this year. He's an expiring free agent. Uh, he's a right-handed bat, though. But he does have good gap power and, and power with the good base running as well. I'm kind of tempted to go after this guy just because I feel like he's going to help our team right now. As opposed to 
getting somebody who I think is going to be like a, just kind of like a bench piece. Like this guy is going to be legit. Like he's going to be in the lineup for us. So I think he is probably who we're going to go after here. And the Pirates are not good. They're they're eight games back. They're under five hundred. So they're definitely a team that would that would part with a guy who's an expiring free agent like this. So Santiago Ramos, I think, is are going to be our target here. It's just a matter of where we're going to put him. So like Sean Wall is going to be DH, and the Piscotti has honestly been really bad. Piscotti has not done anything for us this season. There's been no show of like he's going to break out of it. So you know, I don't I don't want to like. DFA him because he would get claimed with how good his ratings are. But also, I don't know, maybe... I don't want to trade him, perhaps, but I do think that his spot is up for grabs. Like, we don't necessarily need to play him. It's just who would we get rid of to... I don't know. How would we get him off the roster, essentially? I don't, is... is we're, it's we basically have to back him up. We have to make him as backup. Maybe we drop one of these relievers. Maybe like we send down, I don't know. I, I guess I mean Luke Pennant's been so good for us though. But maybe we're just like, I don't know. Maybe we do like the Dom Smith situation with the Red Sox, where they're just like, hey, you know, you served us well while the guy is hurt, and now we got a replacement for you. So uh, bye. But you know, the second we could have a. a, a a pitching injury, and then it's like, man, I really wish we could lose. We could use Luke Pettit right now. So I don't, I don't know if we want to do that. Our scout thinks that we should not do it because the other side offers an overpaid veteran. He's an expiring contract. What would you consider Rochelle Shepard to be then if he's not an overpaid veteran? I don't know, but yeah, we're gonna we're gonna do this. We're gonna make that deal. Uh, we're gonna sub we're gonna submit it and see what they say. Is what what's gonna happen? They say almost. And, you know, we could just throw in, like, a random 20 potential guy. And I know you are able to just hit Discuss Trade again, and I'll let you go through with it. But, I mean, like, I don't know. I just feel like we'll just give him a random, like, this guy. 30 potential, sure. Liz Kayano, Liz Kayano, Liz Kano, whatever this guy's name is, we'll give you him and Shepard. And we'll take Santiago Ramos off your hands for the rest of the season. Ah, screw it. We'll, we'll send Tipton down. So Tipton's going to go back then to double A. Uh, you, also, you also may be wondering who Steve Williams is. Steve Williams is a guy we claimed off Montreal, claimed off waivers from Montreal. He has good stuff, good movement, good enough control to be in the bullpen. Throws a really good fastball slider combo with some potential splitter here as well. Uh, he has been pretty solid for us in five and a third innings pitched here in our bullpen. As you can see, as I back out of it, as you can see, he throws 96, 98 miles an hour as a submarine pitcher. He's a unicorn. That was, I mean, we had to claim a guy like that. Plus, he has uh, one option year, so he's in a role for us that's good. So we're gonna we're gonna keep rocking this double barreled setup action with sack action with him and Spainhauer, and we're gonna rock one down on the bullpen, and that means that we will now be able to call up Ramos to our roster here, and we'll decide where he's. Well, it's gonna be Piscotti is gonna no longer be the starting right fielder, and Mr. Ramos is indeed going to be our starting right fielder. So I think that's what we're the, the positions we're going to rock with here. And we just had an absolutely incredible series here against the Colorado Rockies. You can see we just swept them here at home, here towards the end of July. So that means we're catching, we're catching ground here. We're now only one game behind the Rockies for that top spot in the Pacific Division. You can see we're in a W5 here, then an L5. Not what you want when you're the team trying to hold off the goddamn Los Angeles Angels here. So somebody beat us to it, and the Cleveland Guardians picked up Harmon Stead here as that guy we were looking to pick up uh, as an extra reliever here. And I, you know, I would like to pick up another reliever because I just don't think this back end is going to cut it for the playoffs. Like, Williams is giving us good innings right now. Spainhauer obviously has given us good innings in the past, but he's having a down year. He is not what he's been for us the past two seasons. Uh, you know, obviously he's a reliever, so things could obviously just like flip at a moment's notice with him. But right now, he's not looking too hot. You know, we do have some decent guys who I wouldn't mind throwing high leverage, but I think we want to pick up like a dude, or maybe not even a dude, just like another guy, another arm to have in the bullpen. If we can't pick up a dude, there is somebody out there who is a starter right now, but has been a good reliever in his past, 
And that is another former farmhand of ours, Chris Sweet. If you remember him, he went to the Andres in a trade. Uh, and he has just been really good in their rotation for quite a bit now. Really solid starter for them. He did win. Didn't he win the reliever of the year? Yes, he won the 2033 reliever of the year. They moved into the rotation. He's just been a quality innings eater for them ever since, essentially, except for, like, I guess he was hurt in 2035. But overall, he's been good. I would be acquiring him to put him into a bullpen role. He is an expiring free agent. He's probably going to require a decent package, though, because he is a 60 potential, or he's a 60 overall starter. So, like, what if I offer this 50 potential catcher who we are not going to have space for? I mean, yeah, only a fool only a fool would reject this offer. They may need a little nudge. Well, let's submit the offer and see what they say. Okay, so they're, they want some serious dudes. They want, like, one of our starters, which obviously we're not going to give to them. So I, I don't think we're going to be able to get Chris Sweet unless we offer them like, something seriously good. Like, I don't want to give them Carranza, even though he's not playing for us right now, but, like, I guess I could... No, we're not going to do that. We're not going to give him Carranza. Uh, it's just a lot of, like, these these guys who are, like, far away from the big leagues, like, they have decent potentials, but, like, they just don't have the same trade value that, like, somebody like Carranza would have because they're farther away. and They're, like, you know, they're, like, 19 years old. And there just really isn't any, like, names that are, like, there. there's Steve Laird is really the only name here that stands out to me as a guy who would, like, really upgrade anything that we currently have. Like, Jay Mastis would be cool to get. Uh, but I just, he's not, like, anything special. He's just kind of a part of the lore because his name's Jay Mastis. Uh, but it's really just Steve Laird, who I guess we could try to make a run at. Expiring contract, 32 years old, having a bit of a down year for Washington. And Washington's trying to sell a bunch of guys because I guess they're good. I don't know why they're trying to sell people. They're in the running here. I don't know. We're not going to try to get a guy from Washington because they're in the running. So yeah, we're not gonna we're not gonna do that. And then there's just nobody else real really here who stands out. Uh, I mean, maybe this guy. Maybe he's a lefty though. Maybe this. He's a starter. It's like, my thing is, we already have a ton of lefties. And this guy is, I mean, he's really cheap for a second year, though. He, he doesn't know where the hell his pitches are going, and he doesn't strike out enough people to, like, overlap. He doesn't strike out enough people to overlook the fact that he walks the farm. So I don't want that guy. Uh, like I said, Jay Mastis isn't really anything special. AJ Smith Shaver is still expensive and he's a reliever now as well. Uh, but yeah, it's just not really anything that's jumping out off the page here to me. Like I said, really, this guy is intriguing, but like I said, he's a lefty. We already have a ton of lefties. I don't know if we want to pick up another guy like that. And we also have some people coming off the IL, like Dan Brannick is currently on rehab. Jorge Sosa is coming back here soon. So that's just two lefties that we have in the mix right there. So yeah, I don't think we're going to make a trade for any relievers here. I think that's where we're going to stay put. So we picked up Yuri Perez to add to the rotation. We picked up... Uh, what am I looking for here? We picked up Santiago Ramos to be a part of our lineup. And we also picked up Nolan Shawnwell to be a part of our team against right-handed pitching. So that's going to be our... Deadline acquisitions here, and we're going to head off the rest of the season and see how things go. All right, so I know this is a weird time to do this, but I think it needs to be done. So Chris Aquino is currently on rehab assignment here. Also, if you're wondering why this is red, it's just an allergic reaction for like two days. It's whatever. Uh, Chris Aquino is, he's ready. He's back. He's obviously coming back here. We had to make a decision on that. Also, he's back then a fragile. Fantastic, but whatever. Uh, Aquino, he's coming back. Ellie De Cruz, I think it's time to make the decision on him as, like, he's cooked. We're just gonna... 
we're just going to eat the contract and get rid of him because he's he's providing zero value to our team right now. He's swiping some bags, but we have some other guys who can swipe bags for us. Uh, he plays no defense. He does not hit at all anymore. He's a negative war player. So I think we're just gonna we're just gonna wave a DFA him. We're eating this thirty three and a half million, and then it's gonna add on three point four for the buyout. So it'll be like a, a little bit more than thirty three and a half million. Uh, but I think it is just it's necessary because we just need to have a better player on the roster. So Chris Aquino is going to come on, and Ellie De La Cruz is going to uh, be DFA'd. It was a stinker of a deal. Got a bit of results with that one. It is what it is. But Ellie De La Cruz, we're going to wave and DFA him. And then, uh, oh, wow. That's right. So it's it's just, we've already gone through most of the season, so it's actually going to be way less than that. So it's it's only $13 million. Uh, we're just going to go ahead and pay that. Ellie De La Cruz, we, uh, we salute you. Maybe we can get you a ring, but you're not going to be part of the playoff team. I am at a complete loss for words because it fell apart i mean <laughs> i mean it, it could not have fallen apart anymore we totally collapsed there's really no other way to put it it was just we we sucked down the stretch we were just god awful uh injuries played a huge part as you can see chris aquino has one week left on a fractured finger he came back from that torn abdominal muscle Played for maybe like a week or two, and then boom, broke his finger. Was out for the rest of the year. Uh, probably would have been back for the playoffs, maybe. What am I saying? He still has a week, so he probably would have been, would have been back for the playoffs if we won the division. He probably would have missed like one round if we had to go through the wild card, but, but still. Not great when your franchise player is back-to-back -back seasons of only 87 games and then 73 games. It's rough. It's, it is rough. Uh, and then on top of that, Sean Well got hurt as well once we picked him up. He had a hamstring strain for two to three weeks, missed a bunch of time. Uh, also was just not good whatsoever. Just, just awful. Just awful at the plate for us. Uh, we also had injuries to Santiago Ramos. He was also not good. He barely played. He played a little bit more than the other guys, but he was also not good when he played. I mean, it was just every move we made did not work. He was not good. He had a ton of nagging injuries. We picked him up at the deadline, and then it was like, boom, sore hamstring, sore elbow, hamstring strain for three weeks he missed. I mean, it was just awful. At one point, we were running like, we were running like prospects at everyday positions, because we just had, those were our best options. We're like guys who could be like starters for us in two years who are going to be having to add it to the 40-man at the end of the season anyways. So we put them on the 40-man and we had guys up playing for us. Like, you could see this guy was playing shortstop for us, Jesus Dorez, just to get some sort of possible bat going. I was like, maybe this guy could, could spark. And uh, as you can see, he did not. He did not spark. Guadarrama was not playing is enough to at shortstop to he was not hitting at the shortstop for me to be like hey we can't play this guy at shortstop because uh doors you know he can hang at shortstop you can see here uh major league shortstop 19 games there was a positive it wasn't a one but it wasn't a negative either uh but he wasn't giving us any spark with the bat padilla and suzuki both played well suzuki actually played terribly down the stretch overall you can see this is a 3.4 this was a four this was a four war. It went down because uh, you can see his splits here. September was just he had a one. He had a one. He had a one WRC plus. Right when we needed him to keep this up and carry this offense, he was like, you know what? I'm gonna be the worst hitter in baseball. Thanks. Thanks a lot, Suzuki. Very cool. Juan Padilla. Uh, I think he cooled down down the stretch as well. Not as much. But overall, finally Juan Padilla type season, and it doesn't matter because everybody else on the team sucks ass and Aquino gets hurt. Uh, Dave Gaddy, we called him up. He got a cup of coffee. He was fine, whatever. He was somebody we claimed off waivers at the start of the season. Ramos, like I said, was awful. Huzzy was just up and down, finished very meh, nothing inspiring. 
Haggy was up and down. He was solid for a catcher, but, you know, when he's, like, your best... He's, like, one of your best hitters, it's probably not going to go too well. Uh, Tiziano was, like, the big one. I mean, what the fuck? We give him an extension, and he's like, you know what, I'm going to put a sub-100 WRC+, plus, have my worst season, literally ever. He has never, ever, ever put up a season like this in his entire career. And he was just like, you know, I got my money. I think I'm I think I'm done. I think I'm cool. I think I can it's just like what the hell? Like his walk rate goes up, his strikeout rate's the same, uh, his Babip's like about the same as it has been throughout his career, and he just wasn't good. What's the deal? The Scotty was bad, Deshaun Tukes was not good as a rule five guy. Like we said, Sean Well was bad when he, we re when we reacquired him. Conalate was not good at the plate. We were expecting him to at least do like, what he did last year at the plate, and he was just, he just wasn't. He, he didn't do that at all. And he's also fragile because he got hurt a bunch. So that's just fantastic. Carranza, we were trying to get his bat going because he was really good in AAA. He did not help us at all. Uh, the bat catcher spot was just an absolute negative for us this year. We were trying to rock this guy in left field for a while because he's got this insane contact gap power speed profile. And he has risen through the minor leagues this season. And I was just like, this bat, you know, we need a bat. Let's let's see if this bat can do something. And we call him up, and what do you know, in 47 plate appearances out of 20 WRC+. Plus, and then also was just completely unplayable in left field. And then if you take a look at the team stats here, you can see it's literally it's just the season got off to that poor start in April. May was very good. June was very good. It was like, okay, we're starting to write the ship here. We're looking like we have over the years. And then the trade deadline happened. Or then, then July did not go. It was like, meh. You know, I, like I said, we went in that trade deadline being like, things are kind of, you know, struggling. We don't have a Kenya. We're kind of treading water. We make a, a couple big moves. And those big moves do not pay off. And we just suck. We just flat out suck the rest of the year. 11 and 18 in August. 9 and 18 in September. It was just brutal. One of the worst offenses in the league. 11th in runs scored. When was the last time we were 11th in runs scored? Like season 2? 2025? I mean, Jesus Christ. And then we just we just spoil a bad pitching team, you know? We had a good zone rating. We had a good pitching team. But the, the bats were just so incredibly bad, we couldn't even sneak into the playoffs. Just brutal. I mean, like, like I said, the arms are good. The arms are not the problem. The arms are, like, very rarely the problem here. We sort by uh, sort by war. Mike Hoskins puts up a four-war. Josh Flynn a four-war. Ernesto with a four-war. Yuri Perez came over, and he was good for us and for L.A. I mean, I, he was okay for us, but, you know, still, he was solid. He wasn't an issue. Lampkin started turning things around, I believe, as the season started going on. Yeah, you can see here in September, he was like the only player on the team who was performing in September. It wasn't great in all, June, July and August, but definitely a down year for Justin Lampkin. And he's got a team option for this upcoming offseason, so Justin Lampkin might not be on the team next year. Team's going to look a bit different. Obviously, we're going to try to take a swing and try to make the playoffs again and get make a run for the last year here at the Angels in 2039, but I'm, I don't think Justin Lampkin's going to be a part of that team. Luke Pettit was was good in that fifth starter role. Uh, unfortunately, once he moved to the bullpen, he just became god-awful. I mean, his profile, I could have seen that coming. His profile really does not translate to the bullpen, but uh, I just felt like he earned a spot on the team. And it wasn't like he was pitching high leverage anyways in the bullpen. We very much had him avoiding high leverage as a mop-up guy. So it wasn't like he was really costing us games, but he was not good in the bullpen. But, uh, you know, Paco Worthing, he, he had a couple injuries this year, but overall was really good. Chris Croxton was solid. Steve Williams kind of got unlucky with the ERA, but was good. Good enough. Jorge Sosa was like, meh. Tipton was good in 17 innings. Spainhauer had a weird year. Pelmar had a weird year. Uh, it just wasn't great. Brannick got hurt a bunch. You can see here he's on an IL assignment. He was, he was solid when he pitched, but he got hurt a ton. 2038 shoulder tendonitis, bicep tendonitis, mild oblique strain, herniated disc. Brutal, brutal season for Dan Brannick. Uh, Ken O'Brien got hurt. He was really good in his like cup of coffee. He got 117 plate appearances, was hitting, was playing all over the place for us, was a very, very key contributor on our bench as just a super utility like Ben Zobris type guy. 
and he decided to sprain his ankle, and that was a big blow to us as well. So he got hurt. We know Aquino got hurt. That's back-to-back -back seasons of him playing very minimal games. Not great. Not great at all. Hopefully next year goes better because we're trying to win a, win a goddamn World Series before we move on to Raleigh here. And it's just, I mean, I mean, what can you say? It was just an awful year. I mean, it wasn't like we didn't try. It was just everything went, everything that could have went poorly was just a disaster. So the season has come to an end here in 2038. We have reached the end of the playoffs after missing them. You can see here, we took over in 2024. In 2025, we immediately improved to 80 wins, made the playoffs on back-to-back -back years. Then we had like a three-year stretch where we were kind of like transitioning to get more of like our development players into the system and getting those guys up to the big leagues. And then it was four years in a row of 96, 95, 99, 104. 85 wins, missed the playoffs with like a really weird year where we like super underperformed our Pythagorean. And then 98 wins, 100 wins. And then this year we underperformed our Pythagorean a bit, but overall still a bad year. Just everything that went wrong could have. 79 and 83, we missed the playoffs uh, for the first time since 2035. And uh, not great. And then, you know, to, to, to really seal the deal here, the Houston Astros win the World Series again. Back-to-back -back World Series wins for them. They take out the Marlins in seven games in the championship series. The Marlins and the Astros have been, like, the best team the past, like, five years. They, I mean, they are just running through the National League. Uh, and then the Astros, did they have Tirada? Was he playing for them? He pitched... 52 and two-thirds innings for them. So he did pitch, like, pretty much a full season, but uh, was not good. He was not good for them. Uh, so, uh, you know, at least at least we didn't, like, have a, an insane reliever on somebody else's team. Not that, like, our, like I said, not that our pitching was the issue. That was not the issue for us. It was the bats that just completely fell apart. Uh, big, big part of that was Aquino not performing or getting hurt. But uh, Torada was not the issue while we lost. But Torada does get a ring. As we traded into the Astros, and we take a look at their team stats, I mean, just they're just incredible. I just, I mean, look how many ones you have here on the offense. The best run scores, and the most runs scored in all of baseball, or I guess this is the National League. And then you also have the most, uh, the second least runs allowed in the National League. Just a very, very, very good team. Ones and twos. I mean, literally the worst thing they are at is base running, and that's sixth, which is still a positive base running. So, and now we have to look upon to the offseason and hopefully get this team in position to compete in 2039 for Robert Pollard's last run at the helm of the Los Angeles Angels. <laughs>